Please let me go. We can't do that, Miss Lowell. Mr. Brown wants you should see the fight. It's only the third round. I'll go back. Just let me go by myself. Mr. Brown is mad already. We lost you for two minutes. I promise I won't run away. Where would I go? All right. Let her go. my mind. I don't want to see the fights. I'm hungry. Call a cab. Call a cab. But Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown says to keep her happy. Call a cab. Disregard of the taxpayer's money. I paid for this apple out of my own pocket, Captain. Lanny, you've spent $18,600 in the last six months investigating one man, a single man. Brown's not a man, he's an organization. Now I need money to fight money. Now look, Lieutenant, I've got nothing against you personally. I admire you. You've got too many brains, but that's not your fault. Now, what about this $18,600? How am I going to explain this to the commissioner? Well, I dictated an explanation if you want to use it. Memorandum to Captain Peterson covering expenditures of the 93rd Precinct Station. The combination is growing stronger every day. The only way to crush it is to get the top man. When Grazzi left the country, Brown... What do you think this is, a homicide investigation? You're dealing with the largest pool of illegal money in the world. You're fighting a swamp with a, a teaspoon. The combination keeps no books, no records. Everything's run on word of mouth and hard cash. That's their one weakness. What? They have to have a treasurer. So? And I know his name. The name of a man who can pick up a phone and call Chicago and New Orleans and say, Hey, uh, Bill, Joe is coming down for the weekend. Advance him 50000 And he hangs up the phone and the money is advanced. Protection money. A new all-night bar opens with gambling outside city limits. A bunch of high school kids come in for a good time. They get loaded. They get irresponsible. They lose their shirts. And they get a gun because they're worried. They want to make up their losses. And a filling station attendant is dead with a bullet in his liver. I have to see four kids on trial for first-degree murder. Look at it. First-degree murder because a certain Mr. Brown picked up a phone. You can't touch Brown. He's clean. You got nothing on him, not even the parking. Now, yeah, why is he so careful? It's unnatural. You can't tell the jury a man's guilty because he's too innocent to be natural. He's no more innocent than this gun. Oh, now, stop getting emotional, Leonard. He's innocent until he's proven guilty. Yes, Captain. Is there anything else, Captain? Yeah, it's a girl. Susan Lowell. She's had a tail on her for six months. Yeah. Why? Brown girl. It's our most valuable lead. We know next to nothing about Brown, but a woman knows. She makes it her business to know. If I can get hold of her and make her talk. Oh, man, Ed, you spent six months trying. She went to Vegas, you went to Vegas. Yeah. She flew to Cuba, you flew to Cuba. Couldn't get authorization for the expense. Paid it out of your own pocket. I had to. You wouldn't back me up. Well, I'm not in love with her, Leonard. You are. Mr. 
this off the record. It's between friends. Try to face facts. You can't bear to think of her in the arms of this hood. Forget her. You're a cop, Leonard. There's 17,000 laws on the books to be enforced. You haven't time to reform wayward girls. She's been with Brown three and a half years. It's a lot of days. And nights. Face it, Leonard. Glad you agree. Susan, I, well, I hardly recognized you. Oh, I'm just the same, Mr. Audubon. Well, how's your lovely mother? She's in England someplace. I haven't kept track. Well, I should think you'd have gone along. I hear that uh, Vladovich is playing a Beethoven cycle. Oh, I, I haven't the interest I once had in the piano, Mr. Audubon. Well, now I'm disappointed. You don't play anymore. The only thing I play now, Mr. Audubon, is stud poker. Will you dance with me, Mr. Audubon? Why, certainly, Sue. You, you all right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> the day, Mr. Brown, let's go our little lady. I'll do it personally. Susan. I've taken some pills. I think I've died. Susan. How do you feel now, Benny? Lost. I feel terrible, Mr. Brown. You kept fighting, Benny. You've got hot. Lost three of my teeth, too. All right, so you lost. Next time you'll win. I'll show you how. Take a look at Joe McCloy here. He used to be my boss. Now I'm his. What's the difference between me and him? We breathe the same air, sleep in the same hotel. He used to own it! Now it belongs to me. We eat the same steaks, drink the same bourbon. Look. Same manicure, same cufflinks. But there's only one difference. We don't get the same girls. Why? Because women know the difference. They got instinct. First is first and second is nobody. The best man won a night, Mr. Brown. You were better than Martinez. Only you threw it away. You step in the ring and shake hands with him. You want to be his friend and you want to fight him. No, Benny, no. Mr. Brown, shut the door. Now, Benny, who runs the world? Have you any idea? Not me, Mr. Brown. That's right, not you. But a funny thing. They're not so much different from you. But they've got something. They've got it and they use it. I've got it, he hasn't. So what is it, Benny? What makes the difference? Hate. Hate is the word, Benny. Hate the man who tries to beat you. Kill him, Benny, kill him! Hate him till you see red and you come out winning the big money. And the girls will come tumbling after. You'll have to shut off your phone and lock the door to get a night's rest. Get on your feet, Benny. What'd you do that for, Mr. Brown? You should have hit me back. You haven't got the hate. Tear up Benny's contract. He's no good to me anymore. Where's Susan? In the car? I tried to tell you before, Mr. Brown. Tell me what. He's in General Hospital. 
What happened? Just took some pills. Get the car and bring it around. Buy me some cigarettes. Do you put her in a private hospital? Is your relative? Not exactly. Married to her? Just a personal friend. Yeah, visiting days are Tuesdays and Fridays. I don't know how you two got in here. You can get out the way you Tell came. Tell the man out. not to get excited. Mr. Brown is a very reasonable man. You don't know him. Oh, is he? Well, I'm not. And I intend to make life very difficult for your Mr. Brown. You shouldn't talk like that, Lieutenant. You're overstepping your authority. Joe, the man has reason to hate me. His salary is ninety-six fifty a week. The busboys in my hotel make better money than that. Don't you see, Joe? He's a righteous man. Personal feelings mean nothing to him. My girl's dying in a public hospital and I want her out. She's under arrest, Mr. Brown. What's the charge? Homicide. It's ridiculous. She wouldn't kill a fly. She'd try to kill herself. Is that a crime? It happens to be against two laws, God's and man's. I'm booking her under the second. Tell the man if he puts her on trial out. change his pants. Tell him the next time I see him, he'll be down in the lobby of the hotel crying like a baby and asking for a $10 loan. Tell him that. And tell him I don't break my word. He must have done something pretty fine to get as high as you are, Mr. Brown. I'm looking into that. I'm going to open you up and I'm going to operate. I hate to think of what I'll find. But I tell you, Joe, the righteous man, Miss Lowell? Do you hear me, Miss Lowell? Are you a doctor? My name is Diamond. I'm a detective. You let me alone. I have to ask you certain questions and you'll have to answer. I feel so cold. I can't even turn off the heat. Can you get some hot coffee, please? If you'd get up and walk, you'd be a lot better off. I want to go to sleep. Just let me sleep. Here. Just take some of this. Come on. You're very kind. Everyone's kind. I don't deserve it. Come on, I'll take a little of it. That's it. It's good. Why did you try to kill yourself? I don't know why. I can't remember. Please let me go to sleep. Were you sleep. jealous? Is that why? Was there another woman? Please, please. There was another woman, wasn't there? Just you mentioned me her name, sleep. Alicia. Is that right? What about Alicia? Was Mr. Brown seeing Alicia? No, I don't know. I don't know who she is. Then how do you know her name? I don't know. You must know. You kept repeating it. Where'd you first hear it? I never heard it. I saw it. Where'd you see it? On a letter? In his apartment. It was raining outside and there was a mist on the window. And he was writing a name on it with his finger like this. On the moist glass. Alicia. 
And when he saw me, he rubbed it out. Oh, I'm so cold. Where is Alicia now? I don't know. Didn't you ask him? He wouldn't tell me. What was that? Oh, diesel truck's going by. It's almost morning. Was Brown upset when you asked him about Alicia? I don't know any Alicia. Don't touch me. Go away. Please go you away. You think you're the bright, respectable girl you were four years ago. You're not. You attempted suicide. You're under arrest. You could be sentenced to jail for six months. Nurse, may I have some water, please? Miss Lowell, answer one question. No. Who is Alicia? You tell me. Get on your feet. There's a man downstairs with a writ of habeas corpus. Already? McClure, what like tell him? You know what habeas corpus means, Sam? I know what it does. It's Latin. It means you may have the body. Mr. Brown may have it. Sam. We're going to find out who Alicia is. I want you to pick up every hood who works for Brown. But pick up Brown himself. He's crazy. What happened, McClure? When they picked us up, I mentioned your name. You know what they said? Quit shaking. What did he ask you? A girl's name. That's all he could ask. He just kept asking me this girl's name. Like he was nuts. He's crazy. What girl? They knocked it out of my head. I don't know. Alice something or another. Alicia, that's what it was. Alicia. What'd you tell him? Exactly what I know. <laughs> nothing. That's right, Sandy. You know nothing. Absolutely nothing. Don't forget it. I got a right to make a phone call. What do you want to call? Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown's a little busy right now in conference with Mr. Diamond. No, legally, I don't have to submit to this test. I know. We appreciate your cooperation, Mr. Brown. And if I say no? Well, if you say no, I have a lot of questions to ask. You may be sitting in that chair for a couple of days. This way, I can tell if you're lying in a few minutes. Well, go ahead, Larry. Let's get it all the way. Picking me up for peddling without a license. You could have thought of something better than that, Lieutenant. I'd prefer it to be suspicion of murder, but we had none today. I would have been happy to accommodate you. A police lieutenant. Now, I'm going to say one word at a time. Most of them won't mean a thing to you. But I want you to say whatever pops into your head. Like if I say sweet, I say sugar. If I say police, I say 96.50. Apple. Pear. Blue. Ocean. Brown. Mr. Brown to you. Only my friends call me Brown. Water. Whiskey. Gun. Permit. Spaghetti. Bettini. What? What's that? What's what? Bettini. Spaghetti joint on the north side. Since when? Never heard of it. You couldn't afford it. Go ahead. Woman. Expensive. Snow. White. Alicia. What was the name again? A woman's name. Alicia. No. No what? I said no. You want me to say it again? You know Alicia, don't you? Sure. Who is she? A two-year-old filly that broke her leg in the Jamaica Stakes. I lost ten grand. You were lying, Mr. Brown. When you heard Alicia, your heart went bang. You don't lie with your blood pressure. You know what this means? It means you're scared. And Mr. Brown isn't scared of a horse. Who is she? What does she mean to you? That's a crime. Book me. Book me, small change. All right, take him out, Sam. To the bullpen? No. Back to the gutter. Mr. 
Brown is a very influential citizen. And I ducked 14 calls from the commissioner today. The 15th caught me. One more call and I'm out. Leonard, what were you doing? Just give me one possible explanation. That's all I ask. I was following a lead. I was being logical. 96 false arrests. How am I going to explain? You only have to explain 95. Sam, what'll I do with Leonard? Tell me what to do. Just give me another 18,000 for the Brown case. The Brown case is closed. Kaput schluss. The end. No more. Case closed. Hey, Sam, what was the, the name of that hood we failed to pick up? Ralph Patini. How long ago did he drop out of sight? About seven years ago. Why? That's about the same time that Grazzi left the country and Brown took over. Yeah. So? Let's take a look at that graph. See how it jumped after he said Bettini? Bettini's was the only warrant we failed to serve. He hasn't been around for years. Maybe he's dead. No, he's not. I checked the morgue. The files is nothing. Why don't you go home? Get some rest. Oh, I've got a call to make first. Leonard, Peterson meant what he said. You cross him. means we're both out. What can we lose? 96.50 a week? on your mind, if I didn't know. Oh, thought maybe we could go dancing. I've been dancing, Lieutenant. Furthermore, you haven't been around here for six months. And furthermore, if you want a date, do what the others do. Call me first, a week in advance. Well, Rita, I, uh, I'm giving a party tonight. I thought maybe you'd like to come. Party? <laughs> Who's going to be there? Just you and me. Joke stinks. Lieutenant. Either put me or let go my arm. Leonard. Leonard! Take me to the party. You're a beautiful girl, Rita. But you're stupid. Can't say anything nice without spoiling it. Why do you waste your time with a cop? Could get me a nice rich hoodlum. You should be able to recommend one with your connection. What is there about a hoodlum that appeals to certain women? Hoodlums, detectives. Woman doesn't care how a man makes his living. Only how he makes love. Who is she, Leonard? I'm stupid, Leonard, about everything but men. Them, I know. Give me my shoes. I'm going home. Put them on for me. When she hurts you again, baby. Don't wait six months. Yes, I'm having a drink. Well, don't look at me. 
me as if I were a lush. That music, turn it off. I enjoy it. I said turn it off. What are we so cheerful about today? Where did you get that outfit? What's wrong with it? I like you better in white. You've got a dozen white dresses. Why don't you wear them? White doesn't please me anymore. A woman dresses for a man. You dress for me. Go put on something white. I won't. What's the matter with you? What have I done now? Before I came in, when you were playing that record, what were you thinking? I was trying to remember how I fell in love with you. It's so hard to remember. A girl's first love shouldn't be. It should be your only. Maybe that's why I can't leave you. We'll talk about love some other time. Do you know what I've been doing? What's been happening? People tell me all sorts of things. I don't listen. I didn't ask you before. You were sick. What did Diamond tell you? Diamond. Lieutenant Diamond. Detective. 93 Precinct. He grilled you for three hours in the hospital. What did he tell you? Kept asking me about a girl. What girl? Her name was Alicia. Who's she? I don't know. He was very insistent. What was her name again? Alicia. Doesn't mean a thing to me. Susan, tell me, come on. What's bothering you? I hate to despise you. Susan, what are you trying to do? Drive me back. What do you want, Susan? Tell me. Look at anything you want. Tell me. Nothing. Anything at all. Nothing. 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 I had a call while the captain was in. I didn't want to disturb her. Who? She just said Rita. She wanted to see you and said you'd know where. Thanks, Roger. 1394 on my last call is at 1439. Say, Lieutenant. Hi, Bob. If you're looking for Rita, she's not dressing. Thanks. You took your time getting here. Oh, come on. I've had a bad day. Don't give me any more. What I've got to tell you is not good. Fix this for me, please. I'll tell it. You flew me your court, pinching half the town. There's a big mat on you, and it's burning all over. Is that it? They're quoting a price on you. You'd better take a vacation. Where'd you hear? It's all around. I picked up bits here and there. What are you going to do? That's what I've been doing, only more. Are you trying to... Are you trying to get yourself killed, Leonard? Brown doesn't kill to get what he wants, he buys. Then you'd better sell out or start running. Hey, you're really worried about me. A little. It's enough. It's a lot for me. That's the music. Leonard. Yeah? When will I see you again? Well, if I'm not dead, you'll find me where I always am, in jail. They're gonna wake up. Christmas? Shoot me with my own gun. That's what gets me. Fanny. Let me wake him up. Leave him alone. Mr. Brown doesn't want to draw any blood or show any marks. Now talk to Mr. Brown. Let me have him, Fanny. Two minutes is all I'll need. What for? I want to ask him one question. All right, go ahead. It's all yours. But first. Fanny, we're friends. You don't hold up a friend. Hey, didn't Mr. Brown pay you? 
You're not Mr. Brown. For Mr. Brown, I'd snatch a judge from a superior court for a chocolate soda. Same goes for Mingo. Right, Mingo? Yeah. How much? A hundred. For Mingo, too. What? A hundred each. Mingo. Thanks, Fanny. Now ask more all the questions you want. What did you pick me up for? I asked you a question. Why did you pick me up? I'm talking to you. Answer me. Why did you pick me up? There he is, Mr. Brown. I was softening him up for you. I did a pretty good job. I told you not to touch him. I didn't hurt him. We're still legal. The trouble with you, McClure, is that you never took time to learn technique. Fancy Mingo, bring that radio over here. Turn it on. I only want to borrow it, Joe. Will Joey Cohen please look under the Frigidaire? Here's one of their current progenies, Martin. We're going to give the lieutenant a little concert. How's that? Too loud, turn it down. Can you hear me, lieutenant? Just want to ask you one question and then you can go. What are you looking for? Maybe I can help you. What about Alicia? What's your information? Arresting all my friends. Phony warrants. What's behind it? Bingo, try it. Ah! Now don't be stubborn, Lieutenant. What about Alicia? Why don't you ask yourself? Get on drums. Real crazy. You like crazy drums, Lieutenant? Have a good time. Diamond, what are you doing here? Well, well, 
well. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> My congratulations. <laughs> Come in. Call him. Grab one of my own officers. Slug him. Torture him. You were right, Leonard. They're afraid of something. Alicia. Well, that's a start. Let's go to work on Brown. I'd like to start by picking up Brown and company. No, you can't. They outsmarted you. Take a look in the mirror. There's not a mark on you. You were drunk. You came here on your own. That's the defense. And it's airtight, Leonard. That's why Brown delivered you here. His chief witness is me, Peterson. Oh, I'm sorry, Leonard. Alicia. Alicia, Alicia. They don't know if it's a, a horse, a boat, or a girl. What else have you got? Another name cropped up, Bettini. Bettini? Yeah, the hero. Yeah, where does he fit in? Out of 97 warrants, he was the only one we couldn't pick up. He turned up again on Brown's lie detection. Sit down, Leonard. Yeah, I don't bother him. He was Grazzi's right-hand man before Brown, before McClure, from my generation. He dropped out when Grazzi had to leave the country. Not dead? No, scared. It didn't fit in with Brown's new setup. None of the old crowd did. Bettini didn't wait around and get himself killed. <laughs> Turned honest citizen. Changed his name and went into hiding. You know where? Did him a favor once. Could have put him away for something he didn't do. I let it pass. He didn't deserve it, considering all the times he was guilty. I didn't have the evidence. Well, tell me where to find him. Oh, he's scared, Lander. Too scared to talk. If he's that scared, he'll listen. Just a minute. That's all I ask. Just a minute. Let me turn off the stove. Could cause a fire. Lots of nice old people in the building, okay? I've been waiting for you a long time. You look like such a nice young fellow. That brown sure knows how to pick him. I would never have suspected. Can I lie down? Make it easy. Come closer. One shot ought to do it. You're not going to die, Mr. Bettini. I've got no money to offer you. I've got something to offer you. Don't fool with me, young fella. Get it over with. Mr. Brown didn't send me. My name is Diamond, Lieutenant Diamond, 93rd Precinct. If you'll help me, I can put your nightmare away. I can't. I can't even help myself. How can I help you? I'm looking for a name. Alicia. Ever hear of her? Mean anything to you? Alicia was Brown's wife. Who told you? She told me. She was a good girl. Helped you right off the farm. Brown married her when he was a prison guard. Two years later, she was a lush, drink anything. Then Brown got tired of her. So he got rid of her. Take your time, Mr. Bitt. He was on Grazzi's boat, three days out for Portugal. Alicia came to the table drunk. Brown told her to go sleep it off. She called him a name. Grazzi laughed. Now, Brown. I remember the look on Brown's face. And then he hit her. And she got up from the table and she pulled off a wedding ring. It was hard to pull off, it must have been. Run to her finger. She pulled it off and threw it in the ocean. Then what? 
Then she went to a cabin. I never seen her again. What happened to her? How do you know? I know Brown. I know Brown too, but that's no evidence. Then there was the ship's anchor. What about it? We stopped at the Azores. The skipper went ashore and got another one. You think she was murdered and tied to the ship's anchor and dropped into the sea? I don't know which came first. I jumped ship the moment we landed. Who was the skipper? Some Swede. What was his name? I never talked to the man. What did he look like? In uniform. Who looks in the uniform? It's important, Mr. Bettini. If the anchor was used, the skipper would surely know. You'd have to be paid off or killed off. Now try, please try to remember his name. Go away, leave me alone. Seven years I don't talk to nobody, now I talk too much. You'll have to come with me, Mr. Bettini. You're locking me up? The next stranger who comes in won't be from the police. He'll be safer with us. You better pack your things. I got them all on you. Except this. How come a nice guy like you is a cop? Just lucky, I guess. You like antiques, officer? Who can afford them? If you're a captain on a boat born for Portugal, and you keep your mouth shut, you can buy a lot of antiques. Maybe your whole store full. That is what I've been telling you for the last five minutes, but you don't listen. Well, be calm. We can change our plans. Lotus in the broken in Elskling. Ja came to dig om en halv time. Oh, we can hire park cocktailer. Oxeo don't go to eat Sterlingen. Bra. Hey, do Elskling. What can I do for you, sir? I'm Lieutenant Diamond, police. Diamond? Expensive name. Ha <laughs> ha. I won't take much of your time, Mr. Dreyer. I just want to ask you a few questions. Please. It's about a large purchase you made. Ah, well, I have complete books. Every dollar is there in black and white, unless it goes in the red. <laughs> uh, this purchase was made in 1946. 1946? I'm sorry I was not in business then. So I, I can't help you. I was hoping you'd have some record. It's about the purchase of an anchor. I don't understand. In 1946, you were skipper of a private boat bound from New York Harbor for Lisbon, Portugal. On the way, you stopped at the Azores and bought a new anchor. Why? I don't understand. Well, try a little harder. You don't know me. I'm very stupid. The boat was a cabin cruiser owned by Grazzi. It's now being operated by a Mr. Brown. Do you know Mr. Brown? I had lunch with him last week. He's a very fine gentleman. He's a hoodlum. Because I have lunch with him, that is not a crime. I have lunch with anybody. I'm democratic. I'll even have lunch with you. <laughs> Who paid for this shop? Me, Dreyer. You, Dreyer, borrowed the money from the Bolomac Corporation. The Bolomac Corporation is Brown, or Brown and Grazzi. Mr. Brown doesn't pay money for nothing. What makes you so valuable to Mr. Brown? What do you have on him? My name is Nils Dreyer. I live at 821 Mason Avenue. That is all I have to tell you. You know, Mr. Dreyer, things changed since I walked in here. Brown knows I'm here. He knows I'm talking to you. I said nothing. Yeah, but Brown doesn't know that. In exchange for information, Mr. Dreyer, 
I'll give you protection. I'll do better than that. I'll put you in jail. Suppose you put me in jail. The man in the next cell happens to have a gun. Boom. One dead sweet. Thank you very kindly. I'll remain stupid. How did you get in here, sir? The store is closed. I'm late for an appointment, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Dreyer, the secret you think keeps you safe will blow up in your face. You're dealing with a, a ruthless man. Mr. Diamond, I was a seaman for 30 years. I went to sea aged 14. I've seen storms, I've seen gunfire, I've seen torpedoes. I've been wrecked not once, four times. On a raft, 37 days, nothing but water. Nothing kills me. I'll die in Stockholm like my great-grandfather, age 93. I'm not scared of anyone, including you, so get out. You change your mind, Mr. Dry. Just phone the 93rd precinct. I'll send a squad car for you. I wanted him here alive. What happened? He had a gun, didn't he, Fanny? He had a gun, all right, Mr. Brown. I told you to go without guns. Which one of you changed my mind? I didn't have any gun with me. Mingo. It wasn't me, I swear. Well, he pulled a gun on me. What'd you want me to do? With your kind of brain, there was nothing else he could do. Now listen to me, you two. Go about your business. Go where you ordinarily go. Do what you ordinarily do. If they ask questions, say nothing. And you, get upstairs, go to bed, stay there. You've been sick, you understand? Sick. And if they take you to police headquarters, shoot yourself in the head. It'll make everything a lot simpler. Now get out. Joe. Why did you do it, Joe? I told you he pulled a gun on me. I'm trying to run an impersonal business. Killing is very personal. Once it gets started, it's hard to stop. I could understand it if you were a trigger-happy punk, but you're not. You're an experienced man, Joe. Why did you do it? I guess I'm getting too old to handle a gun. Yeah. Maybe you're just getting too old, Joe. You don't like me much, do you? You figure when Grazzi left the country, you should have taken over instead of me. Isn't that it? No, the job's too big for me. Yeah. You say that, but you don't mean it. Give me your gun, Joe. Two seconds ago, you had this gun in your hand. We're all alone here. The thought of using it flashed through your mind. But you couldn't. If you didn't hesitate to use it on Dreyer, why? Because he was a little man, Joe. Like you, a little man. You had a soft job and good pay. Stop thinking about what might have been. And who knows? You may live to die in bed. That's all, Joe.
It's empty. Can't be. Did anybody open this since yesterday? Miss Hartleby? Impossible, sir. What do you got? It was Dreyer's life insurance. Where would an ex sailor keep a logbook? The driver was a very meticulous man. He kept a complete record of everything in his shop. In his shop. If you're looking for the log of Grazzi's yacht in the summer of 46, you'll find it in there. Sam, get the DA's office and get a warrant for Brown's arrest. On what charge? Ah, arson. I got a court order issued this morning. It says that all the deeds, papers, and properties of this shop belong to me. Dryer had 20%. The Bolomac Corporation had the rest, and I'm the Bolomac Corporation. Nobody else. Not even Grazzi? I bought him out. Why should the Bolomac Corporation be interested in burning that ship's log? Why? Liquidation of assets, which is hardly a crime. I'll wait until I can put you on trial for murder. Who's murder, Lieutenant? Mine, if necessary. Don't push too hard. It's my sworn duty to push too hard. Diamond, the only trouble with you is you'd like to be me. You'd like to have my organization, my influence, my fix. You can't. It's impossible. You think it's money. It's not. It's personality. You haven't got a lieutenant. You're a cop. Slow, steady, intelligent, with a bad temper and a gun under your arm. And with a big yen for a girl you can't have. First is first and second is nobody. Yeah, the, the DA is out. I have his assistant. Hang up, Sam. you to leave, Mr. Diamond. Oh, if you don't, I will. You think this is mink, Miss Logan? You think these are the skins of little wild animals sewn together for your pleasure? You're mistaken. Take your hands off. These are skins of human beings, Miss Logan. People who've been beaten, sold, robbed, doped, and murdered by Mr. Brown. see me again or even speak to me again, but save yourself, leave him. How? All you have to do is walk out. Is that all, Mr. Diamond? You followed me long enough to know I can't. I live in a maze, Mr. Diamond. A strange, blind, and backward maze. And all the little twisting paths lead back to Mr. Brown. I can't buy that, Miss Lowell. Not in a million years. Why do you want to change my life, Mr. Diamond? My boss says I'm in love with you. I keep telling myself I'm just doing my job. Is that why you came to see me? No. I brought you a present. Keep it or burn it just as you please. What is it? It's a photograph of Brown's wife. Her name was Alicia. You might ask him what happened.
Who is it? It's only 10.30. The concert that dull? Take your hands off me. Okay. I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Come here, I want to show you something. All this. this is my bank. I could have built this vault in my apartment, but that would have been too obvious. We don't take checks. We deal strictly in cash. There isn't anybody I would trust with so much temptation except myself. Or maybe you. Trust me. Who did you see at the concert? Nobody. A nobody by the name of Diamond. Then why do you ask? You know everything. If there's one thing Mingo and Fanti can't tell you. Whether I still love you. What did Diamond tell you? That he's in love with me. Diamond in love? That's not possible. Any more than this clever machine. The machine gave me a strange present. What was it, a pair of handcuffs? I want to meet her. I want to meet your wife, Mr. Brown. You can't. Why, because she's dead? No, she's alive. She's living in Sicily, in Grazzi's house. This was taken a month ago. Came one of her letters. Why did she send it to you? She wants to come back. Why did you leave her? I don't want to talk about it. I do. Can't you let me hold on to some pride? I lost all mine with you. All right, I'll tell you. I was in love with her. Me, a prison guard. It was for her I began to work my way up. All I had was guts. I traded them for money and influence. I got respect from everybody but her. She did everything she could to humiliate me. She was always drunk, flirting with other men. I tried to straighten her out. I took her on a boat trip when Grazi had to go to Sicily. The day after we docked, she disappeared. I spent months looking for her. What do you think she was? Living in Grazi's house. He was a bigger man than me. Now you know who Alicia is. Well, 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 good evening, Miss Rita. How are you? How you been? Lonely, Fred, lonely. I'm between shows after 12 o'clock. Mr. Diamond is out. Would, would you like to go up there and wait for him? Thanks. You tell me what he does with his evenings. Work? I'm going to kill that guy. Don't you kill him. He pays his rent right on the dot. I'd miss him. You and me both. Wide awake. When do you want it done? I understand. Mingo. What's hmm. wrong? Mr. Brown wants an order filled tonight. Who? Diamond. Sam, what? Whatever you think, and drop it. It won't bring her back. Sykes Fifth Avenue. She came to see me in her best shoes. I'll call her Peterson. He'll put every available man on it. Never mind, Sam. I said never mind. We don't have to check bullets or fingerprints. This room has a name written all over it. Brown, Brown. He 
you wanted to kill me. You got tired of waiting. Well, so have I. What are you going to do? Close the case. I know how you feel. Nobody knows how another person feels. No, Leonard. Sit down. I saw the papers this morning. I'm sorry. Terribly, terribly sorry. Why, that it wasn't me? Say what you came to say. I left Mr. Brown. You're a little late. Brown killed the girl in your apartment. His men did it. Can you prove it? No, I... Can you prove that Fanti and Mingo did it? That he ordered them to? No. Sit down. Did you know you've gone? He will. I opened his private vault. Why? I wanted to help you if I could. What does he keep in the vault? Guns and money. It's no crime to have money or even to have a gun, only to use it. I saw something else. What? Something about Alicia. Can you prove that she was murdered? No. I can prove that she's alive. What are you talking about? She's living in Sicily with Grazzi. That's impossible. She sent this to Brown. It's Alicia, all right. Years older than her photograph taken on the boat. She must be alive. This photo was never taken in Sicily. There's snow on the ground. Yeah, the same girl, all right. She sure changed since the other picture. Could that be a fake? No, sir. This was made with an ordinary wide-angle lens. Now, judging from the scope... Never mind all that. Can you tell me when the picture was taken? The original was printed on Farragam paper. Well, what does that mean? wasn't on the market till a year and a half ago. Frank, see that highway marker through the fence? Can you tell me what that is? Identify it? No, I can't, but I'll check it right away for you. Will you do it quickly, please? Leonard, yeah. Alicia's alive. There's no murder. There's no case. We may have an even stronger case. I've been in touch with our overseas military intelligence. They've been looking for Grazi for years, not to be found. And there's no record that he ever got to Sicily. What about the teeny story? Uh, Bettini was right about a murder taking place on the boat. He was just wrong about the identity of the victim. Wait a minute. Spell that out. Well, I, I've been looking for the wrong murder. Brown didn't kill his wife. He killed his boss, Grazzi. And that's why our intelligence couldn't find him. Grazzi is at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean tied to an anchor. It's a beautiful theory, Lenny. Beautiful. Except for one small item. You can't prove it. You have no witness. Oh, you got it, Frank. Let's see. State Highway Marker 225A. 25A. Do you know where that is? I can find it in two hours. It's a one-lane gravel road that curves west from the coast highway. You've come to me, officer. My name is Anna Lee Jackson. Are you sure you never took an ocean voyage? Well, if I had, I certainly would have remembered. You really have a way with flowers. Thank you. What are these? These are stock. Beautiful, all of them. How do you do it? Oh, you have to love them. They know the difference. Oh, my goodness. What is it? Caterpillar. 
eating the buds. Well, why didn't you kill it? Oh, I couldn't kill anything. I can't even cut these flowers. People want to see them, they've got to come here where they're alive. Not withering and dying in a vase. You feel that pretty strongly, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. I can tell you why you feel that way. Can you? Because you saw your husband murder a man named Grazzi. I'll spell the name for you. G-R-A-Z-Z-I, -Z Grazzi. I have a photograph of you. Taken seven years ago. You can have it if you like. The men are old friends of yours, one alive, the other dead. Now listen to me, Alicia. Brown, unfortunately, is not a caterpillar. He doesn't eat flowers, he devours people. I had a friend, a girl, 24 years old. She was murdered last night. Brown thought he was killing me. He didn't even know her name. I don't hear anymore. Please, please, I'm sick. Can't you say I'm sick? You're sick, all right, Alicia. Sick with fright. Now you're in our custody. You have nothing more to fear. You know that because you're perfectly sane. I'd rather be insane and alive than sane and dead. Hurts. If you can move it, it's not broken. But it hurts. Take a drink. I took a drink. It still hurts. Take another drink. Honey, I'm trying to tell you. You don't understand. Well, I got news. Big news. Brown is finished. The police found Alicia. She's going to spill her guts to the grand jury. I said Brown's washed up. Finished. Off the map. You say. That means nothing. Grazi says that's something. There ain't no Grazi. He's dead. Since when? Seven years. I've seen cablegrams. Brown sent those cablegrams. Brown killed him. Brown kept them alive to keep the boys in line. Why haven't you guys been chaperoning this Miss Lowell dame? You want to know where she is? She's helping the police. Seems like Mr. Brown has lost his charm. What would you suggest? Kill him. Kill him tonight, not tomorrow. Mr. Brown will be dead soon enough. The boys will take care of him for his long double cross. But if we do it now fast, we'll save a lot of people a lot of trouble. We'll be in more solid than ever. Instead of running around for Brown and wet nurse and all his crazy dames, I'm going to show you two guys how to be men. Start all over. Slower this time. Tell him not to do it. 
I'll do anything you want. I'll go away. You'll never see me again. Please, Mr. Brown. Don't just stand there and let him kill me. Please, Mr. Brown. I don't want to die. Tell him. Please tell him. I feel sorry for you, Joe. So I'm going to do you a favor. You won't hear the bullets. Sam. Yeah. Tell the captain I finished my interrogation. Miss Lowell? Are you a policewoman? No. Who are you? My name is Susan Lowell. I'm a witness against Mr. Brown. I'm not. I can't do it. Haven't I humiliated myself enough? No one's done enough while he's still free. I've been Mr. Brown's girl the past four years. He met lots of girls. They were all crazy about him. I'm not proud of it. Then why'd you stay four years? Why'd you start? I don't know. No, that's not true. I, I was told, but I just wouldn't believe. Take a look at her, Alicia. Take a good look. And you can see yourself ten years ago. If you had only spoken up then, how different your life would have been. Because he killed you. He buried you alive because he's a murderer. That's all he is, a murderer. Want to hear? He killed Grazzi, didn't he? You saw him do it, didn't you? I never said I did. Besides, Grazzi deserved to die. And what about the girl he had killed three days ago? Did she deserve to die, too? What girl? You remember the girl? The girl I told you about at the sanitarium, you remember? No, no, I don't. Then I'll refresh your memory, this girl. Someone he didn't know, never met, never saw. They took 11 bullets from her body. <coughs> the following morning, Miss Lowell had breakfast with him. He ordered bacon and two eggs. <coughs> Tell her, Susan. Tell her how he ate his bacon and eggs while he looked at the papers. And saw the body of this girl lying in the morgue. <coughs> Tell whatever I know. Take it from the DA's office for state. Mr. Brown? Car 5A3, 5A3, call your station. Car 5A3, call your station. Code 2. Captain? Captain, this is Mr. Malloy, an attorney. I have a writ of habeas corpus for Mrs. Alicia Brown. We have no Mrs. Brown here. But I... This is Miss Anna Lee Jackson. Hello, Alicia. with a promotion. Your name in the papers. The clothes body has been found in the river, shot full of holes. Now, this is an act of panic. Mr. Brown is cracking. Sam, take the headquarters squad. Pick up Fanti and Mingo. First, Dreyer, Rita, McClure. They can't have alibis that'll stick for three murders. Come on, Mingo, lay off of that stuff. Bingo, lay off of that stuff, I told you. Gotta eat something. That's 
wall anymore, Swan. That's all we've got. Where is Brown? When's he coming? How long are we going to stay here? We've been here two days, that's all. I, I just can't take it anymore, Fanny. I, I tell you, my thumb's got an infection. It keeps aching worse than a sore tooth. Uh, cops catch us. It'll ache worse. Cops, what can they prove? They don't have to prove a thing. They got three warrants out for us, indictments for three murders. So let them indict. They still can't prove. Can they? You know how long it would take for three murder trials. We'd be in jail for three years. Now relax. Brown will get us out of town until the heat blows out, and then we can come back. How do we know we're safe here? It's the safest place in the world. Perhaps you built this place in the Prohibition days. Not even the bellhops know it's here. I'm sour on this town, Fanny. When we get out, let's never come back. Huh? What I'm worried about is getting out of this hotel. The cops will be looking for us in every closet. Never come. Take it easy, boys. Look, it's now 4 in the afternoon. At 5.30 tomorrow morning, the cops change shifts in the alley. I'll come for you then. Did you get us a car? Everything's arranged. Just keep your heads and wait. I brought you some food. I'm going to go crazy. You've both been good boys. There's enough money here to take care of you for a long time. Divide it even, and don't fight over it. How much, how much you think? Mr. Brown's a generous man. Tell you for a count. Give it here. Police are downstairs. in Brown's vault you've got to identify. Who did this, Mingo? Mingo! Who did this to you? Nobody. Who killed a girl named Rita? Who killed McClure? Who paid you to do it? Nobody. You've got third-degree burns, Mingo. You're dying. I ain't gonna die. Not me. Not you. Enough, Fanny. Fanny. <laughs> Don't leave me, Fanny. He's dead. Murdered. <laughs> Why you ever tried to kill you? You haven't got much time, Mingo. Tell us who did it. Do it for Fanny. You shouldn't have done it. Fanny was really brilliant. Fanny. You haven't got much time, Mango. Who did it? Who killed the girl in my room? Who paid you to do it? Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Let it. What? Sam's been hurt. Shot. What? Where, where is he? In the hospital. He'll be all right. But Leonard, Susan's gone. Get a statement signed. A man like Brown would have a plan. Where would he go to make a getaway? You're a policeman. You find him. He's not alone. He's got Susan Lowell with him. I wouldn't raise a finger to help that girl. Let her go through what I've been through. Well, she never hurt you, Alicia. He's the one who put you away. Why take it out on her? 
because I hate her. Her and every other woman who ever had anything to do with it. What have I done to you? Why do you hate me? Oh, I don't. I must then get... help me. Help me. Tell me where to find them. I've got to get back to my flowers. I'm sure nobody's taking care of them. Lieutenant. I don't want to help you. I don't. But I will. What's keeping that plane? It's supposed to be here an hour ago. I've kept that stupid pilot on my payroll for years, just for a spot like this. Why doesn't he come? Don't try that again. I want to be seen. Don't try that again. Why doesn't he come? I've got everything all figured out. Top to bottom, full of silk. Everything's falling apart. Can't trust nobody, nothing. Get away, Brown. Cero Azul.
Oh, hola, Sheriff. La tormenta me ha puesto nervioso. No he dormido en toda la noche. ¿A qué hora llega la diligencia? Sobre la medianoche, pero creo que la tormenta la retrasará un poco. El agua ha cubierto el puente Little Fork. Tendrán que esperar a que pase la tormenta. Oye, Hank, búscame una habitación. Quiero descansar antes de que llegue la diligencia. ¿Esperas problemas? Siempre creo que puede haberlos. Ojalá hubiera por aquí algún rincón desde el que pudiera observar lo que ocurre. Ya lo tengo. Mi habitación. ¿Ves ese agujero en la tarima? Sí. Desde aquí solo tendrás que levantar un poco la alfombra y verás casi toda la habitación. Vaya, vaya, eso me viene al pelo. Llámame al llegar la diligencia, ¿eh, Hank? Sí, tocaré el timbre. Arriba hay dos camas, acuéstate en la que quieras. Buenas noches, Hank. Buenas noches. Caray, vaya nochecita. Quiero una habitación con estufa. Estoy destemplada y necesito una taza de té caliente. Bueno, hay estufa y combustible en cada habitación. Aquí tiene la llave. Solo tienen ustedes que echar una firma, señores. Supongo que a ustedes les gustará la habitación principal. ¿Cuánto? Siempre pedimos dos dólares por la habitación principal. Compréndalo, es la mejor de la casa. Y procuren ser discretos, por favor. El hombre de al lado se levanta a las cinco. Hola, Hank. Estoy calado hasta los huesos. Guarda bien esto, Hank. Hay cuatro mil dólares. Es la nómina de la mina Lord Lowe. No te preocupes, Tony. De aquí no se los llevarán. Hasta mañana, Han. Bien. Dígame, joven, ¿qué quiere? No lo encuentro. 
Ah, ¿no? No. ¿Qué es lo que ha perdido? No he perdido nada. Entonces, ¿qué demonios es eso que no encuentra usted? Bueno, es... Ah, esto. ¿Lo entiende usted? Lo que yo te diga, Sherry, ser joven es maravilloso. Bueno, Hank, me parece que he hecho el viaje en balde. Me habían dicho que el bandido del pañuelo de lunares andaba por aquí. No esperarás que salga con una tormenta como esta, ¿verdad? Estará rondando por donde haya dinero. ¿Has oído? No, no. ¿Qué era? No lo sé. El ladrón del pañuelo de lunares. El soplo que te dieron era cierto, Sheriff. Pero, ¿cómo supo la combinación? No lo sé. ¿Qué es eso? Es la combinación de la caja fuerte. Te ha observado desde la ventana cuando la abrías. Podemos seguir esta noche. No, y para mañana se habrá esfumado. Pero aunque tenga que pasarme diez años tras él, te aseguro que le atraparé. No te muevas. Suelta la pistola. Todo está a punto, viejo amigo. Y llegas a tiempo para comer unas alubias. Siéntate. 
¿Te crees muy listo, verdad? No, solo precavido. Podías haber sido el ladrón de los lunares. O algún otro famoso criminal. ¿Cómo sabes que no lo soy? Por la pinta que tiene. Venga, vamos a comer. Esas alubias huelen de maravilla. Pues sírvete. Eres muy rápido sacando, ¿eh? Ah, es solamente la costumbre, viejo. Ya, ya entiendo. Esto lo llevo para las serpientes. Oh, no digo que seas una serpiente. Pero creo que este es un buen momento para abrirla. ¿Quieres un trago? Bien, ya que lo dices, sí. ¿Te importaría que pasara aquí la noche? No, viejo, estaría encantado de conocerte mejor. ¿Sí? No estoy tan seguro. Bueno, brindemos, amigo. Salud. ¿Has visto alguna señal de Mason y de la banda? Solo una nube de polvo junto a Cotton Creek. Tienen que ser los bandidos. Yo no lo creo así. ¿Cómo podían saber cuándo iba donde Mason? ¿Y cómo lo habían sabido antes? En este pueblo hay un canalla y tenemos que atraparle. Deberíamos tener noticias de Sacramento. Esa carta se envió hace tres semanas. Ah, ratas. El gobierno no se preocupa por nada. Tenemos que solucionarlo nosotros. No se puede luchar contra los bandidos sin munición. Y no hay forma de conseguirla. Están pasando por el collado Preparaos muchachos Y recordad Que no le pase nada a la chica No hay rastro de los bandidos, Betty. Pero insisto en que no deberías haber venido. No me riñas, papá. Ha sido un viaje estupendo. Me alegro de que vengas conmigo. No me gusta cabalgar solo. Ya, yeah. si no me equivoco, vas a tener mucha compañía.
bandidos! ¡Por favor, ayúdenos! Les hemos dado a los dos. Deberíamos asegurarnos. Ni rastro de ellos. Creo que se han ido al fondo. Casi acaban contigo, viejo. Parece que me va a estallar la cabeza. ¿Qué ha pasado? Que te han disparado y has caído por el precipicio. Al agua, ¿no? ¿Me has sacado tú? Hijo, yo pienso que te debo la vida. Nunca lo olvidaré. No te preocupes por eso. Tenemos que largarnos de aquí. ¿Podrás andar? Bueno, andaré aunque sea arrastras. Salvo que hemos topado con dos desconocidos, todo ha salido como hemos planeado. Hemos luchado con ellos. Aunque han matado a Jake, están en el fondo del río. ¿Y qué hay de la chica? ¿Estás seguro de que no os ha reconocido? No, no nos hemos acercado a ella. Probablemente estará ya en el pueblo. Vamos. Hola, muchachos. ¿Hay noticias del convoy? Ahí viene Betty. ¿Y tu padre? ¿Y Tom? Ambos están muertos. ¿Qué? ¿Muertos? Les han matado. ¿Quién ha sido? En calma, cuéntenos lo ocurrido, señorita Betty. Pues, estábamos atravesando el collado. ¿Cuándo? Luego dos hombres persiguieron a los bandidos. Corrí hacia donde estaba, papá. Ay. Calma, señorita Betty. 
Ya entiendo. Habría que hacer algo. Es una injusticia. ¿Qué te parece yo? ¿Qué estamos haciendo? No podemos quedarnos aquí hablando. Tiene razón. Betty, yo cuidaré de usted. Quiero que aquí se sienta como en su casa hasta que hagamos planes definitivos para su futuro. Quiero que sepa que haré lo posible por ayudarla. ¿Y enviará a alguien a buscarle? Iré yo mismo. Ahora mismo. Eh, señora Williams. ¿Sí? Quiero que cuide a Betty hasta mi regreso. Le llevaremos al pueblo. ¿Muerto? Uh -huh. Su hija nos lo acaba de contar. Íbamos a llevarle al pueblo. Uh -huh. Venga, os echaremos una mano. Muchachos, ocuparos de Mason. Bien. Vamos para allá. No os mováis, quietos los dos. Ahora, Vlad, y hacedlo rápido. ¿Dónde está el resto de la banda? ¿Por qué era necesario matar? Podíais habernos robado sin asesinar a nadie. Hemos encontrado a estos dos rebuscando en los bolsillos de Mason. ¿Qué hacemos con ellos? ¡Suelta la pistola! Vigílales. Nosotros no hemos matado a Mason. Si llamáis a su hija, ella os lo dirá. Su hija no está en condiciones de venir aquí para ser acosada a preguntas. No pretendemos acosar a nadie, pero si ustedes nos acusan, hemos de defendernos. Aquí viene Betty. Señorita Mason, estos hombres nos han acusado de matar a su padre. Oh, no, señor Melgru. Estos son los hombres que le dije que me salvaron la vida. Bueno, en ese caso creo que os debemos una disculpa. Vosotros no lo sabéis, pero la situación de este pueblo es desesperada. Estamos sin comida ni municiones, aterrorizados por una banda de criminales asesinos. Hasta ahora hemos hecho dos intentos de traer provisiones y lo único que hemos conseguido es perder varios hombres y también los convoyes. Y si no conseguimos provisiones, pronto moriremos de hambre. Ya nos estamos muriendo. Solo podemos aguantar algunos días más. Larguémonos de aquí. Es la única solución. Tiene razón. ¿Cómo vamos a marcharnos después del esfuerzo hecho por sacar adelante este valle? Escuchad, os haré una propuesta arriesgada para mí. A aquel que abandone el valle le daré 100 dólares por su granja. No creo que nunca llegue a recuperar mi dinero, pero me arriesgaré. Ah, eso suena bien. Venga, empecemos a empaquetar nuestras cosas para marcharnos. Esperad un momento. En vez de vender vuestras casas por 100 dólares, ¿no creéis que debemos intentar pasar un último convoy? Nuestros hombres tienen familia. Ya ha habido suficientes matanzas. ¿Por qué no nos dejáis intentar? Si nos conseguís provisiones, os pagaré bien. Dejemos eso. Usted denos un pedido y estaremos de vuelta con él dentro de cuatro días. De acuerdo. Entonces venid a mi rancho esta tarde y os daré un pedido por valor de mil dólares. Sí. ¿Ves a ese hombre de Melgru? Sí. Muy pronto vas a estar muy interesado en él. ¿Quién es? Quiero darte una sorpresa. ¿Sí? Eh, yo también tengo una sorpresa para ti.
Conduce a la señorita a su habitación. Sí, señor. Recuerda, esta es tu casa, Betty. Es un gran placer tenerte aquí. Así que esos dos están en el fondo del río, ¿eh? Juraría que son los mismos a los que disparamos. De no haber sido por ellos, ahora mismo la gente se estaría marchando. Bueno, de todas formas tienes a la chica. Recuérdalo bien, ella es mi propiedad particular, no la toques. Sí, diré a los muchachos que moderen su lengua. Podría enterarse de quién eres realmente. Ken fue otra vez a explorar el Valle Homestead. Y jura que es la mina de oro más grande que nunca haya visto. Corre por medio de todos los ranchos. Pronto nos haremos con ellos. Entonces la población se marchará y esa mina será nuestra. Señor, la muchacha está escuchando. Llévala a la guarida. Tenla allí hasta que no quede nadie en el pueblo. No serás capaz. Voy a ver a Melgru, va por la hoja de pedido. Compañía Minera Los Lobos. Solo ha venido uno. ¿Qué hace en el barracón? Es igual. Tú mátalo. Pero... Que no haya tiros. ¿Podéis decirme dónde está Melgrub? Sí, creo que lo encontrarás en... ¡Vamos! ¡A por él!
¿Qué pasa aquí? Eso quisiera saber yo. Mis chicos tienen orden de detener a los extraños. Y eso han hecho. Lo siento mucho. No ha pasado nada, Melbrook. Solo estábamos jugando. Aquí tenéis. La hoja de pedido. ¿Cuándo salís? Ahora mismo. Y habremos vuelto antes del amanecer. Los bandidos no nos esperarán tan temprano. Espero que lo logréis. Si no lo logramos, no será por nuestra culpa. ¿Verdad, Jake? Tú lo has dicho, hijo. No os estarán esperando. ¿eh? <risa> ya verán esto. Suelen ocurrir las cosas más inesperadas. <risa> ¿No íbamos a Sandy? No vamos a ser tan estúpidos, viejo. Nos estarían esperando en el collado. ¿Crees que Melgrove y Dandy están con los bandidos? No cabe duda. ¿Y qué hacemos? Todo depende de lo que suceda de ahora a mañana por la mañana. Hmm. ¿Qué será de la señorita Mason? Va, Tréboles, arrastro. Hola, Melgru. Hola, Melgru. Vamos a salir al amanecer. Pasarán temprano. ¿Y la chica? En el cuarto. Encerrada. Ahí está bien. Mañana hablaré con ella. Señorita Mason. ¿Betty? Me alegro de que me haya encontrado. Cuénteme lo que le ocurrió. Me trajeron aquí por haber escuchado sus planes. El jefe es Melgru. Quiere quedarse con todas las tierras del valle. ¿Por qué? Porque bajo el suelo hay una riquísima veta de oro que corre por en medio de todos los ranchos. Kent está con ellos. Vamos a salir temprano. Cuando amanezca volveré para recogerte. Ahora trata de dormir un poco. Sí. Despierta, viejo. ¿Eh? ¿Qué pasa? Límpiate las orejas. Tengo algo que contarte. ¿Dónde has estado? He ido a la guarida de Meldu. Qué interesante. Sigue. Tienen prisionera a la señorita Mason. He hablado con ella y me ha explicado lo que se traen entre manos. Escucha.
Bueno, me voy. Vigilad bien el lugar, muchachos. Y también a la chica. Si viene alguien, dispara. De acuerdo, jefe. Tú busca el carro, yo iré a por la chica. localizado un carro y los caballos. Bien, vamos allá. Nos llevaremos a este con nosotros. Sí, yo me encargo. De acuerdo. Señorita Mason. Sí. Dese prisa, ya se han ido. Han engañado, Melgro. Han ido a la guarida. Apártese, voy a romper la ventana. ¿Está preparada? Enseguida lo estoy. Nos veremos en el túnel. De acuerdo. Ahí dentro hay comida suficiente para un año. ¡Vamos! ¿A dónde crees que vas tú?
tenemos que darnos prisa, muchachos. Están volviendo. Monta en el caballo ruano y vete rápidamente al pueblo. Hijo, aquí hay una caja de dinamita. Llevémosla. ¿Qué ha pasado esta vez? Se han llevado a la chica y a Dandy. Tranquilo, viejo, yo le detendré. Nos han cortado el paso. Habrá que entrar en el agua. Mil dólares para el que atrape a la chica.
Ahí bien. Apúntalo. De eso depende el futuro del mundo. es el jefe. Y debajo de vuestras tierras se encuentra una riquísima mina de oro. Señores, se acabó vuestro problema. Los bandidos están vencidos. Cuéntaselo todo, viejo. Ahora vuelvo. Muy bien, amigos. Escuchad. Muchas gracias por todo lo que has hecho. No hablemos más de eso. Era mi deber como delegado del gobierno, pero... Hoy salgo para Sacramento y... Tú no lo sabes, pero... Te vienes conmigo. Dandy ha muerto. Acaban de encontrarle en el camino. Sheriff, puedes darme la enhorabuena. Permíteme que te presente a la futura señora de John. Oye, joven, espera un momento. No puedes hacer esto, verás, yo sé Y la quién señorita eres. Mason también. ¿Quieres decir que estás dispuesta a... Escúchame, jovencito. No olvidaré que nos has salvado la vida a mí y a este pueblo. Pero yo tengo que cumplir con mi deber. Por eso tengo que detenerte. Yo sé que tú eres el ladrón del pañuelo de lunares. Ya entiendo, Sheriff. Me viste por la tarima. Tienes razón, te vi por la tarima. Pero te equivocaste de hombre. Salió antes que yo apareciera. Y dejó esta espuela clavada en el suelo. Seguramente me viste cuando la recogí. Esa espuela pertenecía a Dandy. Bien. ¿Y qué me dices de esto? Los encontré ayer en la habitación de Dandy. Él es el ladrón que buscabas. Hay una recompensa de 5.000 dólares por él. Será tuya, Sheriff. Bueno, si el bandido era Dandy, ¿quién diablos eres tú? Un marshal de los Estados Unidos. Tu hombre de sacramento. <risa>